Hey everyone, welcome back to the Living in Washington YouTube channel. My name is Aldo, I'm with the LeVain Real Estate Team and in today's video, I'm going to break down all of Bellingham, Washington. I'll explore a little bit about the county, but mainly this is gonna be about Bellingham. What are good neighborhoods? What's the traffic like? What are the good restaurants? What's the most affordable areas here in town? What's the most expensive parts of town? And just really breaking it down on what you need to know if you're looking at purchasing a home here or if you're just moving here in general. So this will be really key information when you're making that decision or if you're already coming this way, at least you're gonna have a lot more information when you arrive. So without further ado, let's jump into the computer here. I'm gonna show you everything on Google Maps with a lot of video footage in the background to show you and to help explain everything that I'm gonna talk about in today's video. So let's go in. Okay, so here we are. This is Bellingham, Washington in a nutshell. So everything you see right here that is in red is this is I guess technically Bellingham proper. So this is within the city limits. So everything that you will see pretty much from this area is still considered Bellingham. So all of this right here is pretty much still Bellingham. So everything in the red is all Bellingham, but within this small area is the city limit. So the other stuff you can consider what we call here is the, is the county. Now, Bellingham, as you can tell, once we're here, we have three lakes. So not that that's what we're known for, but we have three lakes. The biggest one's gonna be right here, it's gonna be Lake Wacom. And that spans about 14 miles. So 14 miles, Lake Wacom. So this all that goes all the way down and even this touches barely part of another county. So this is really nice. This is public, a lot of housing, which we'll get into here a little bit later on. Now, when you're coming in from the south, we're, we're gonna have Lake Samish. And Lake Samish is a man-made lake that was created long, long, long time ago. Um, it's a very popular lake as well, a lot smaller than Lake Wacom, as you can see. You can, both lakes, you can have boats on here. You will have houses on here as well. This water here is much warmer than Lake Wacom. And then you will see that we have this little lake right here, which is Lake Patton, which is a great area to go. Once again, I'll touch bases, but this here, you can't really have actually big boats on here. You can have little paddle boats. Great area to go and visit, but um, those are the three lakes that we have here in, in Bellingham and Whatcom County. As you can see, the main way to get in and out of Bellingham is gonna be by I-5. So I-5 will cut straight through Bellingham and go all the way up north. Now this right here kind of splits Bellingham from the east and west. Um, but from anywhere from Bellingham, as you can see that Bellingham, we are just 20 minutes and this is the Canadian border right here. That's Canada. So if you're driving from Bellingham, you can go up to Ferndale. Ferndale here, maybe seven, eight minutes, depending how fast, you know, um, the freeway is traveling right now. To Blaine, this is Blaine here, so right on the border. That's gonna probably be 25 minutes because it's right on the border. Birch Bay is a part of Blaine and Semiamu is right here as well. Now that's gonna be another about 20, 25 minutes as well. You can go, if you go here, you can zoom in a little bit, you can see there's a road that shoots straight up north and there's also one here that you may not be able to see, but this one shoots up north. This one here is called the Guide and Ridden. It goes straight up to Linden. Uh, Linden's a very popular area. This is, has we've seen massive growth here in the last couple of years. So you can go up the Guide or you can go up the Hannigan, up to Linden. Once again, there is Canada. We have a border crossing there as well, which is really convenient for anybody who lives on this side of the county. Now, you're gonna see also this highway over on the right-hand side. A lot of people know it as Mount Baker Highway. Anybody says it's Highway 542, they are not from this area because no one ever calls it that. This is Mount Baker Highway. This goes out into, um, if you keep going, you're gonna have Maple Falls area. You can go into Deming and keep going up. Kendall, Maple Falls, right up this way. Now, the really cool thing about why everybody loves this highway is because this goes straight over to um, Mount Baker Ski Area. So you just keep following this road all the way over to the east. It's about an hour drive in the winter time um, 
from Bellingham because of all the snow, obviously you're gonna need to, you know, get drive a little bit slower. In the summertime, if you're zooming up there, a good 40 minutes. You get up there 45 minutes and it's beautiful up there. Um, so those are kind of the, the ways you have around. So we don't have these massive, massive highways that you maybe see in like Seattle, even in Houston, Texas, Arizona. You pretty much have it streamlined. You know, there's only a couple of ways that you can get in. So to Ferndale Blaine, boom, to Linden up this way. Um, and then to Everson, you can take Mount Baker Highway up this way or some back roads, but you can see it makes it really, really, really simple. Now, in Bellingham here, the downside about our highway is because Bellingham has grown, we have about 90,000 people that we that live here. And in the last couple of years, we've seen the same amount of as deaths as we've seen as births. But we've seen maybe three to 5,000 people coming into Bellingham, and that's grown our population. So the downside right now is that our highway, our I-5 here, this is the main highway. So this I-5 goes all the way down Oregon, all the way through California and into uh, the, the Mexican border. So two-way highway all the way through, which can be congested at times. Um, the worst part is going to be, it's going to be about five o'clock and this is the sunset exit right here. So if you're coming actually down south, you're going to start seeing traffic right around here and it can be kind of miserable and then keep, keep going. Now, for those of you that are coming from out of state, maybe from Seattle or Texas or Arizona, maybe you're coming from a larger area. The traffic in Bellingham is not probably what you see in other places. If you get held up in, you know, like the 5 p.m. traffic or whatever here in Bellingham, you're probably gonna be in it for maybe 10 minutes before you get off the freeway. So to us, that's a lifetime. That is so long because we're usually being able to get off up and on with no traffic. If we wait at a stoplight more than one light, if we miss it and we can't get onto the next one, that is a very long time for us. So keep that in mind. If you're coming in here and you're used to traveling a couple of miles within 20 minutes, living in Bellingham is gonna be a breeze for you because the traffic here, you're gonna probably laugh at us because there's not a lot of traffic to us. It is a lot, but on I-5 around 5 p.m. it can get pretty trafficy. Now sunset also right here, there's uh, this right here can get pretty backed up as well on sunset. Um, now um, for everything else is pretty easy breezy because as you can see, no matter where you're at, if I wanted to travel from the north part, so let's call it Bellis Fair, or even Cordata up here, and I wanted to travel down the freeway and go all the way down to the very south part of Bellingham, which I consider Fairhaven, that's gonna take probably 15 minutes tops. I, maybe 17 minutes if there's a little bit of traffic, depending on the time of day. But most people aren't trying to travel that route around 5 p.m. Um, so that is gonna be pretty, the, I would say the longest from the very north part of Bellingham to the south part of Bellingham, 15 minutes. Now, same thing again, if I was traveling even from out this way, from Bellingham or from Lake Wacom into downtown, that's probably gonna be 15 minutes. Fairhaven, if you wanted to travel all the way up, up Alabama and then hit the public beach area at Lake Wacom, 15 minutes. It's not very far, the traffic is very minimal. Okay, so let's move on to the neighborhoods here in Bellingham. There's a lot of neighborhoods. There's most of the neighborhoods here are fantastic. Myself as a real estate agent, I can't steer you and tell you which neighborhood is better than the other neighborhoods, but I use this, um, this website right here called niche.com and it kind of goes over a lot about Bellingham. They do a lot of, lot of extensive research into a lot of areas in the country. And here in Bellingham, they say about the third best place to live in Whatcom County. There's not a lot of places, so maybe what, seven or eight, so it's really not that much. Overall grade is A minus, but I wanna talk about some things here. So, public schools, A minus. As you can tell, housing, which we'll get into here next, is about a C minus. C minus or housing is, is very, very difficult. But 
good for families, jobs, cost of living, once again, has to do a little bit with housing, is gonna be uh, pretty bad, pretty poor. And in the last recent years, if you know much about what's been happening here in Washington State, especially in Seattle, is that our crime and safety has gone down quite extensively. We have a big homeless and drug issue happening, especially in the downtown areas and pretty much all over the state. So that's just not per Bellingham. But as you can tell, outdoor activities, A plus, commute, A plus. It's easy to bike and to drive here. It's really, really bike friendly. Health and fitness, we're outside. We have pure, pure weather up here and our air is, is great. Our weather is great, obviously, besides, you know, January, February can be kind of pretty, pretty lame, but diversity, A minus, nightlife, A plus. I mean, I'm 33, so when I was 21, I guess the nightlife was cool, but it's not anything like in the big cities. So if you guys want to go find more information about these neighborhoods, go to niche.com. So I grew up here in the Barkley neighborhood. Barkley neighborhood is really great. Um, you kind of pretty much have everything in the Barkley neighborhood. Um, you're gonna have a movie theater, a grocery store, bars, restaurants. You can kind of be in Barkley and really not have to leave if you don't want to. Um, Silver Beach is right on the lake, which is really, really beautiful. Um, a lot more expensive for sure. I mean, the average house here in around the Silver Beach is about $950,000. Where in Barkley, it's about $650,000. Downtown South Hill is gonna be uh, a really, really popular area. South Hill is gorgeous because it sits on a, on a hill and you can see a lot of the water with beautiful, beautiful views. Fairhaven, of course, is probably the most known um, neighborhood here in Bellingham because this is gonna be the staple. This was actually separated. This was a city that was separated. It was used to be called Fairhaven and then Bellingham and then it combined. Um, but here, a lot of condos, really great. Uh, walkability is 100 because you can walk wherever you want. It's not very hilly. Restaurants galore, trails, you're right on the water. There's actually a trail that runs from, um, from right here all the way into, and it goes to the boardwalk. And this boardwalk goes over the water and down and goes over into um, uh, Boulevard Park here, which is really, really neat. Now, let's talk about the most expensive areas here to live in Bellingham. The number one place here is gonna be Edgemore. So Edgemore is gonna be your most expensive houses. Um, let me go into this, into our MLS right now. As you can tell, a little quick update here in the last seven days. 91 new listings, 91 pens. Our houses at 7% are still moving rather quickly. So if we go into active and we go into Edgemore, there's not very many on, but there's about two. Edgemore right now is about 2.6 million and 3.8 million um, for sale. As you can tell, this one here, this is, I would say this is an anomaly. A $4 million house in Bellingham is quite expensive. I would consider a $4 million house a very luxurious home. Uh, 2.6 even, I would consider that luxury as well. You're gonna have a lot of, um, of really updated homes, whether they're newer or just have a lot of character and updated. Uh, big homes, mo mo most of these will have views of the water because it sits right above on a pretty big cliff. This one I don't think does, but as you can tell, this one here, this is Edgemore. This is pretty much the a beautiful shot of what Edgemore looks like. This one has a pool. This one's massive, four million. Now, I do wanna say though about what a great thing about Bellingham is, is our property taxes. If I go into these property taxes, they're gonna be rather inexpensive. For the tax year of 2023, here is $23,000. Now, some of you are like, holy shit, that's a lot of money. But 23,000 on a $4 million house isn't a lot because I'm gonna show you this house here as well, the one for 2.6 million. This one here is $15,000. Now, I did the math already before the video and equivalates to about 0.5% of the sales price. Now, if you go to Redfin and you, and I, I always pick on Texas because they have beautiful homes and you get a lot 
for a bang for your buck. But the property taxes are ridiculously high. Okay, so let's go in and let's look at one that is a little bit more expensive. So, I don't know, I'm trying to look for like a $700,000. 799, 799 pounds. So everybody's like, oh my gosh, look what I can get in Texas. So let's go in and see what the property taxes are on this guy. This here is 799,000, 2,700 square feet in Houston, Texas. This is going to have $15,000 property taxes on a $700,000 house. Let's go back to this $2.6 million house and that's gonna be $15,000 in property taxes as well. So my point being is property taxes are gonna be relatively inexpensive, okay? Now, if we go over here to North Shore, this part of North Shore as well, and if you want, I can show you, but anywhere, so this is Silver Beach, this becomes North Shore. This is the east side of North Shore. This is by far the most sought after part of the lake because it's on the east side of the lake. Now, because the sun sets on the west, this right here is gonna get you sun until 9 p.m. on summer nights, and it is beautiful. This right here, everybody who wants to be on the lake wants to be on this east side. Now, don't get me wrong, Geneva and this part is on the west side is very beautiful. The houses on this side though are gonna be less expensive than the west side because as you can see, we have kind of this mountain range right here and this mountain range is pretty big. So this mountain range is pretty big and this, when the sun sets, the first place that will get covered in shade is gonna be here. Now, instead of having light until about 8.30, 9 p.m. on summer nights, maybe you lose about an hour, hour and a half. So, still a really beautiful part of the lake, but these houses over here are going to be very, uh, gonna be a lot more expensive than this part of the lake, especially if you have property, and you just get a little bit more property, more beach access than you do here. Because as you can tell, if we were to zoom in, this lake, uh, Walking Boulevard goes right along. So any houses that are around right here, you will have lake access, but you have to cross this road. As in here, let me see if I can do this. As you can tell, a lot of the North Shore is behind a lot of these houses here. So you're gonna get pretty much lakefront property to, if you were to go here, you're gonna have a few. This way you're gonna have a few over here and then sometimes you start to miss out like right here a lot of docks very very nice docks but a lot of the homes that you see are gonna be across the lake so it is lakefront property but you're not right on the lake because Lake Walken Boulevard cuts right in between your house and your actual dock now let's go into um, North Shore, let's see what's out there real fast. So probably not too much on the market right now. This one, 4.2 million, so really, really, really pretty house. Um, not all the houses are 4.2 million, so please don't get me wrong. They're gonna be anywhere between probably 2 million and 2 million plus. Smaller ones, maybe a million and a half. But uh, yes, yeah, so this one here, gonna be really, really nice. Now, the most affordable places here in Bellingham are gonna be Sudden Valley. Okay, Sudden Valley is past Geneva, all these houses, and Sudden Valley is this major, huge, huge area right here, a bunch of houses. Your average house probably there is gonna be around $450,000. Um, the good thing about it, very, very affordable. The downside about it from what other people have told me is that it does get pretty dark there because it is, like I said, if you remember, this right here is a mountain range, so this, you will lose light fairly quickly, especially in the winter time, you will lose light rather quickly, probably about 2 p.m. And it does get colder because it gets darker earlier. And then the second, I think, most affordable area is gonna be Cordata. Cordata has a bang for your buck though because a lot of new construction homes, Yes, are they more cookie cutter homes than other areas for sure, but they're brand new, you get some space, you get a little bit of yard, and you're gonna be in Bellingham. So that is probably the biggest key that you are gonna be in Bellingham and you're around a lot of places. 
Okay, so for those of you that wanna know more about school districts, let's go into this here and let's touch a little bit about this. Once again, I can't steer you and tell you which schools are better than the others. I wanna show you and of course, you can just go ahead and use niche.com to kind of research some things. So, school districts. So we're gonna have the Silver Beach School District. I think that all of our elementaries are, are pretty much the same. Are there some, there are areas obviously that you, you know, you're gonna have less trouble kids and more than other areas, right? You're gonna have Silver Beach Elementary School, elementary, which is a good elementary, which I went to. Cordata, very diverse. A lot of kids go there. Probably the newest elementary school, which is, I think, the, one of the nicest. Um, so Columbia is probably one of the most sought after school districts because it's, it's a smaller, quaint, cute little, you can walk wherever you want really so this one here columbia i went to columbia also as a kid fairhaven you're going to get pushed back a little bit more in the fairhaven the sandwich school district and the middle schools i think i would say if we were to go from where they're at from good to bad to medium they're all the same platform i think you know colshan fairhaven Wacom middle school shucks in middle school they're all pretty good they're gonna have the good and the bad so all of these elementaries will get funneled into these into these middle schools. When you go from your middle schools, I think it's such a wash because it doesn't really matter. I don't think you're gonna get a better education at one of these middle schools and high schools as well because all these middle schools go to three high schools. And these three high schools are gonna be Squalcom High School, uh, it's gonna be Seahome High School and Bellingham High School. So Squalcom High School is gonna be up here, so more the northeast part of town. So you're gonna get a lot of people from here, but you're gonna get a lot of people in Bellingham or in uh, from Squalcom. You're gonna, this is probably the property line right here. Alabama Hill, this kind of separates Bellingham and Squalcom. You're gonna go through probably some of this right here. And this is gonna be Squalcom School District, right? And then you're gonna have Bellingham, which then you're gonna have the opposite. So, as you can see, there's Shucks in Middle School. So you're gonna go this way, up Alabama on this south side, go this way, everybody pretty much from Southern Valley, and you're going to capture pretty much this area, and this is gonna be Bellingham High School, right here. Now, for Seahome, then as you can see what I was talking about earlier, Seahome, you're probably gonna pretty much get all of this, right? Now, this is what I say, and I don't know if this is controversial or not, but as you can tell, there's your, each high school is gonna have a section. Now, I grew up here, so I feel like if this is fair for me to say, but every high school is gonna get a good portion of, of kids where their parents make pretty damn good money, right? For Squalicum, you're gonna have people right here that are along this lake, right, that have, multi-million dollar houses. For Bellingham, you're gonna be right here. And for Fairhaven, as we talked about earlier, Edgemore, one of the most expensive places. So you're gonna get, each school is going to get, I think, the same type of kids as any other high school um, has. So our education system, obviously I haven't been in it for a very long time. Um, but for me, I went to Waka Middle School. I had a good, a, a positive and negative experience. That's just, I feel like how middle schools are, especially for young boys and young girls right now with social media being so, so dominant and so crazy. Um, high schools, you kind of just grow and you, a lot of the high school, depending which middle school you go to, the only crappy thing about our area, if you go to a Shuxton and Waka Middle School, most likely, Half of Wacom Middle School will go to either Bellingham High School or to Squalicum High School. So, anyway, that's enough rambling, I guess, about school districts. But like I said, go to niche.com, guys, and do some of your research to yourselves. We do have a couple private schools here as well that you can get yourselves, your kids into if you want to go that route. Homeschooling obviously can be a great option. Um, so, yes, yeah, school systems, I think our school system is pretty good. I, is there, some elementary schools, I think, that are better than others, yes. Do I think our middle schools, is there one that's better than the other? No. Our high schools, do I think one is better than the other? I don't think so. See, Home High School is a brand new high school, though. It's a $103 million school that was built four years ago. 
so it's pretty nice. Um, Bellingham was remodeled here uh, maybe 10, 15 years ago, I think. Squalcom was built in 2001, probably the oldest school, probably not the nicest. You do definitely got, get um, a lot more diversity there, especially when I was there. Uh, I don't know if that's important to you, but um, again, those are our schools, so take that information as, as you want and do your own research and see what's, what's good for you and your kids and your family. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about amenities. Let's just go to some parks real fast so we can talk about um, some areas for parents and kids. My favorite is going to be the Cordata Park because Cordata Park is a little bit newer. It, it was built maybe three or four years ago. Um, it has quite a bit of everything. It has a little splash pad. It's got a big old, uh, what do you call it? Just a big old uh, covered area so you can barbecue, throw parties. It's gonna have like a little parkour place. It has it has a good size big for big kids playground and one for, you know, three, four year olds playground. It has a pump track, which is really cool because you can just go and take your bike and do whatever. A parkour area and it has walking trails. It's about a mile worth of walking trails, which is really neat, which you don't see a lot. Like I said earlier, Squalcom Creek Park, same thing. It's a little bit newer, maybe eight or 10 years. Um, a, a lot newer, this is going to be bigger than Cordata, it's going to have baseball and softball fields, which is really cool. It's going to have a dog park, it's going to have a basketball court, it also has a big park and a little park and a big shed area or big covered area so you can um, go and do whatever you want there as well. Uh, lots of grass, a lot of great picnic areas as well, so a lot of families do really like this area. So, as you can see, Boulevard Park is right here, right on the water with this picture right here. You can go on the go on the boardwalk. It's really great. So there's a lot of great things for kids and for families, a lot of great parks. Now, for restaurants, I don't know if anybody has seen the last video, but I will link it right up here. But I had a, a video of pros and cons of Bellingham, Washington. And one of my personal cons, I felt like our restaurants, our food is good. We don't have a lot of a, a lot of diversity, so a lot of restaurants are good, but you you tend to find a lot of the foods in one restaurant as you will in another restaurant. So I kind of have a bone to pick with Bellingham because I feel like our food isn't up to where I feel like it should be. Um, but I can talk about a little bit about some of them. I actually pulled them up. So. Let's take a look. I'm gonna go through one by one. So we're here on TripAdvisor, and of course they're gonna go and rank them from one to uh, one to twenty or whatever. So Oyster Bar and Chuckanut Drive here. This is a really good restaurant if you like something that's more fine dining. Of course, if you love your oysters, that's they'll be here. Your oysters are great. Um, the steaks are good and just a really good scenery. Deanna's Cafe Italiano, I have to go back here and try this out because we just got back from Italy and we had some bomb Italian food. So I really wanna go try out Deanna's and see how it compares. Obviously, maybe not because we were in Italy, but still, uh, for being number two here on the list, I need to go try it out. As I'm ruling, it's cool. The food is, is good, right? It's good, it's a very, um, I would say, like pub food. Great burgers, good feet, good good beer, good snacks, good eatery, great atmosphere. So I I, I really like Aslan, um, but I want to show you um, the Birch Door number seven, the Birch Door. If you want the best breakfast here in Bellingham, you need to go to the Birch Door. If I were to overall rate this as like, hey, let's just say as a restaurant, I would probably put this in my top five restaurants here in Bellingham because their breakfast is that good. Um, you get big plates, everything's made fresh, it's right there. The atmosphere and the building here in the Birch Door is really, really cool. Um, and it's my favorite place to go get um, breakfast. Now, let's see, Mexican food, we have, you know, okay Mexican food. I'm from Mexico and I've, ate, I've eaten at a lot of authentic places down in Mexico, so it's hard for me to say, yeah, we have really good Mexican food. Uh, Rock and Rye Oyster House, I actually like this a lot. They have really good drinks, great oysters, good menu, great atmosphere. Keenan's at the pier, again, like I said, as you can mention, I'm saying they have a great atmosphere and good food, but nothing 
has yet stuck out to me. And I feel like I eat a lot, a lot of places, so I need to go out more. I have a two-year-old, so it's a little bit harder now. But Keenan's great atmosphere. It's right on the water. Um, here's a picture of it right here, right on the water, and I'll put some video of, of Keenan's as well. But it has good atmosphere, good burgers, uh, fantastic crab cakes, which is really good. Um, and um, some of their other stuff is, is actually really good. Their steaks are good as well. Before we go, I wanna talk a little bit more about kind of the, the living costs here in Bellingham. So Bellingham is rather expensive, right? I think our average income here probably in Bellingham and Whatcom County is gonna be around $65,000, $70,000 a year. Our average home price is close to $700,000. So it's almost eight to nine times our average wage, which is can be affected pretty heavily. So you gotta imagine, you're not in Texas where you're making $70,000 a year. You go buy a four or $500,000 home, right? So our cost of living is high. Our groceries are gonna be expensive. Hagen, Safeway, Fred Meyers, wherever. But you go out to go get a burger, you're probably gonna be paying 15 to $18, right? Go get pizza, you know, a big pizza's probably gonna cost you at least 20 to 25 bucks, depending where you go. Our gas, for whatever reason, we have like four or five refineries around within probably 60 miles of us, and our gas is expensive. So right now, I think we just filled up and it was almost, you know, 450 to $5 a gallon, depending where you go. All right, well, after so much, I know if you're still around, you're still watching the video, thank you so much for watching this. I know this is probably a lot longer than I wanted it to go, but there was just a lot of information about Bellingham, about anything. Please guys, is there's any other questions or comments, let me know. I moved to Bellingham when I was about seven years old, so I have gone to the school systems. I've seen Bellingham uh, grow as it's grown in the last, you know, 15 years. So if there's any other questions, leave them down below. All my information is gonna be down here below. Once again, guys, if you guys are thinking of moving here, we get calls, texts, messages, emails from people like you who are looking to move into the area or are already here that want to purchase a home. If there is a time and day that works for you, we can go meet in the office, grab a beer, a coffee, whatever it's like, whatever you like, and we can sit down and we can talk more on what you're looking for and come up with a game plan that will be directly to you and we can talk more about these areas and what, what amenities you're looking for and we can help you find the right home for you. So in the meantime, thank you so much for watching this video guys and we'll see you next time.